Hey guys, this is Emma with my recipes, and today we are going to be making spinach artichoke dip with some homemade crostini. So, for those of you who are just tuning in, we're going to give you show you a little bit of a sneak peek of the final dish because you tuned in early, so that's your that's your gift. <laughs> So spinach artichoke dip is so easy and fun for tailgating season. It's a crowd favorite. Honestly, every time I bring it anywhere, um, I just get rave reviews and it's gone within minutes. How could you not like cream cheese and crusty bread? Um, so what we're gonna start with is a half of an, um, a package of frozen chopped spinach. So we need to thaw it out. So I'm just going to hand this to my assistant to put into the microwave for two minutes and then show you how to drain that because it's kind of um, water packed. So. We're going to use two blocks of cream cheese. One is a third less fat cream cheese, and then the other block is fat-free cream cheese. So those are just, you know, using a variety um, of each. A mixture of each is going to help you cut back on the fat a little bit. And I also just, um, I've had these sitting out for a little bit, but I also popped them into the microwave for just a minute to get them softer. So you can see that there. Next, we're going to add one and a half cups of shredded part skim mozzarella cheese. We're also going to add a half a cup of fat-free sour cream. So you can also experiment here. If you want to cut back on some of the cheeses or the creams, you can um, experiment with some Greek yogurt, some cottage cheese. There are like plenty of recipes out there to try something a little different, but this is um, our 150 calorie version. It's a lighter version of spinach artichoke dip, and it is incredible, let me tell you. So we're also going to add next, I'm gonna move this just to have a little more space. Um, so this is a can of artichoke hearts. They're already quartered, that's how you usually buy them at the store. And we rinsed them and drained them from the can, and then you're just gonna roughly chop them. So there's no, let me move my space a little bit. So they don't have to be in like really small pieces, um, but just chop them up a little bit so they're not quartered, so that they're a little bit finer chopped. And there's so many fun mix-ins that I think you can experiment with. With spinach artichoke dip, we were just talking earlier about um, cooking some bacon and crumbling it on top of the finished product. Um, adding different types of seasonings like garlic powder, red pepper flakes, onion powder, um, and then even like a sprinkle of lemon juice to liven up the flavor I think is a great idea. So there's plenty of ways to play with it. So we're just going to add those artichoke hearts straight to the bowl. Everything just goes into the bowl together. It's very easy. does not require a lot of cooking or prepping. So Nicole says that she's never had spinach and artichoke dip. Really? Yeah. Which this is a must make, it Nicole, is. It's especially such a for recipe. Yeah, especially for the holiday season. Okay, so you can just you can see now that the um, my spinach is thawed. So what I'm gonna do is I have a colander here and give me one second. So an easy way, because this is, um, once it's thawed a little bit, it's going to be pretty water packed. So an easy way is just um, layer a couple layers of paper towel into a colander. And my colander is over a bowl right now. You probably can't see that. Um, you can do this over the kitchen sink, of course. And then just squeeze it until all the water's out. What are you going to do with that spinach water? <laughs> you know, drink the, it for a nice healthy the, remedy. The spinach water cannot go to waste, people. Spinach water is so 2017. I'm going to come up with a recipe for that. Okay, so now you just add your spinach in there. And of course, if you have fresh spinach, which I always seem to have extras that I'm trying to use, you should definitely use that in place here. And I would just um, maybe saute it to wilt it down in a skillet with some olive oil for a few minutes. Then once it's wilted down, oh, and maybe chop it into smaller pieces before you put it into the skillet. Um, but then that's what I'd do so that you can go ahead and use that fresh spinach that you have on hand um, instead of having fresh spinach and going to purchase frozen spinach. That doesn't make a lot of sense. 
Okay, so now the last few things that we're gonna add into this bowl are some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. So you can buy store-bought, you know, prepared grated cheese if you want, but I am going to grate this with a microplane. Whoops, we don't want a whole, I mean. That's gonna be that's lucky, not, <laughs> lucky dipper. That's gonna be, yep. So we're gonna do a little bit, about a fourth a cup or sorry, um, yeah, a fourth a cup grated on top, and then at the very end before we bake the dish, we're also going to add a little bit of more um, Parmesan cheese as well as the mozzarella cheese from earlier. We're gonna add just a little bit of freshly ground pepper, about a fourth teaspoon of black pepper, and then three garlic cloves. You can also use garlic powder if you want here, but I love the taste of fresh garlic. Here's an easy way to peel it. It still gets stuck on your hands. So Crystal wants to know, um, she said just out of curiosity, how could we give this dish like a little bit of a bite if we wanted to add some of a kick to it, like spiciness? Um, I was thinking red pepper flakes. Do y'all have any other I, ideas? I was thinking that too. Cayenne. Or like a hot sauce maybe? Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I think you could probably just, you could even there. put yeah, some, there you, <laughs> yeah. you could put some sriracha probably straight into here if you wanted, before, you, you, like before you bake it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ghost pepper for your friends. So you guys get the idea here. You can do this with the additional cloves um, of garlic. I'm just going to do it with one for now. And then that's it. So we have, if you're just joining us, our two blocks of um, cream cheese, our artichoke hearts, black pepper, garlic cloves, sour cream, and mozzarella cheese. And it doesn't look that appetizing now, but trust me, this is one of my favorite. I'm just like, I love dips, I love spreads, any type of snacky food. Um, I could probably just have snacks for my meal every single day rather than actual meals. So your holiday guests or tailgating you know, crew are going to love this. So, oh, and also a really cool thing about this um, dip is that you can prepare it two days ahead just like I'm doing now and put it in, into your casserole dish and line your casserole dish, or sorry, cover it with um, some plastic wrap and then it can sit in your fridge for up to two days before you bake it. So I think that's a really great tip for um, prepping ahead, especially during these busy holiday months. So I just have a casserole dish here and if I was serving this to guests, I would probably put it in a prettier um, like ceramic baking dish. Um, there's a lot of, you know, prettier ones out there. These are just what we have for our kitchen testing purposes. So, all right, that's really all that goes into it. So we're going to put this into a 350 degree preheated oven for about 30 minutes. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to serve it, which is with, this is a loaf of French bread. Actually, one more thing. Okay, so before you bake it, we're gonna add a little bit more mozzarella cheese over top, an additional half a cup. This will brown really nicely in the oven. It'll be wonderful. And then we're also going to just do, for some extra garnish, some more fresh Parmesan, Parmesan cheese. That's why you always need an assistant. I thought it didn't look cheesy enough. <laughs> it was not cheesy enough, so you we can need- never have enough cheese. We need more. Okay, so that's done. Now to go on to the homemade French bread, the homemade um, crostini. So this is the final product. As you can see, it browned really nicely in the oven. All you wanna do is um, cut your French bread into about a quarter inch slices. And then we're gonna brush them with some olive oil, garlic, and salt and pepper. And put them into a 350 degree oven for about 10 or um, 12 minutes until they're crunchy and brown um, and that's a really special way I think to serve this spinach artichoke dip but of course if you want to you can just use tortilla chips which <laughs> we also have here too so 
So I'm going to line them on this baking sheet and brush them with olive oil. I like even numbers. So I discarded that last piece. Just have some olive oil here that I'm just going to quickly brush them with. Do you think there's another type of bread that would work really well for, for this kind of thing, like for homemade crostini? Um, yeah, any type of like nice crusty bread I think is going to be fine. Any type of bakery bread. Um, what do y'all think? I think French bread is good because it's got that size. It's got that really nice appetizer size. Yeah. Sourdough could be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sourdough could be good too. Oh, Anne says pita bread would be delicious too. Mm. Oh, yeah, pita good point. We were looking for pita bread earlier. I forgot to mention that and it was... Um, we didn't have any left. So otherwise we could have made our homemade pita bread wedges, which would have been really good. You could okay. also use crackers. Those would be yummy. Yes, for sure. Okay, do I have another? So here's a fun tip that I just learned from one of our kitchen friends is to cut um, a garlic clove in half and then use that to rub directly on to the French bread slices. If this were a larger <laughs> clove, that would be nice. But anyways, just to get that flavor, rather than using, um, you know, garlic powder, you can just rub it straight on there, which is awesome because you can smell it. It's really aromatic. And then we're going to add some salt and some kosher salt, which is right here. Just sprinkle a little and some freshly ground black pepper. So like I said, you don't have to do this at home, especially for game day. People might look at you a little bit crazy if you show up with homemade <laughs> crostini, crostini or bruschetta. You bake but the bread at too, home, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, is, this is homemade bread. Um, so we're going to put this into a 350 degree oven for about 10 or 12 minutes. And now let me clear off my space and show you the final spinach artichoke dip, which is so tasty. just got out of the oven, so it's super melty. You can see that it's browned really nicely on top around the edges, and if you want to brown it a little more, um, you can just throw it into the broiler for a few minutes. And then, of course, I have my nice bread here, so you can serve it however you like. You like. Not so fancy. A little more fancy, so do you all want to go in at it? Wow. Yes. I'm going to put some right here for y'all. You can also just dip straight in there if you want. <laughs> so I promise this will be a crowd favorite. You guys definitely need to try it out um, for game day, for the holiday season to serve to your guests. They're going to love it. And this is always just a crowd-pleasing, classic favorite appetizer. So I hope you guys enjoyed the spinach artichoke dip. And we'll see you guys again very soon with more tips and holiday recipes.